welcome to the Eugene Tordo YouTube channel. I want to thank everybody that's subscribed so far. If you haven't, go down there and uh, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Leave comments, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you feel like. Uh, or just check back on the channel every now and then. Today's channel is about one way of testing your injectors. This is one way... I don't have the factory service with manual with me. This is one way that's described in the factory service manual of testing your injectors. And uh, what you want to do is you're going to need two things. You're going to need one of these injector pulsers or testers. Get them off eBay. I think about 35 bucks. And you can get one of these. I forgot what they go for. The uh, fuel pressure gauge that you can get from... Uh, like Harbor Freight or local auto parts store, depending where you get them. And uh, get everything on there. Um, if you get your fuel rail on and your pressure keeps dropping, just you'll have to rekey your ignition. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can uh, use your, just rekey the ignition, and charge the fuel pressure. And on a 90, there's actually a little red lead down here that you're supposed to be able to hook a wire to the battery and that will continuously flow your fuel pump or something like that you can also go into the fuse box and run a lead from there from the fuel pump to the positive terminal on the battery and just continually run your fuel pump but uh, to do this test you need to key the ignition mark down the fuel pressure you take a piece of paper or a blank piece of paper you'll write on here each injector number however you want to number them and uh and then you'll write down the fuel pressure drop for each one every time you pulse the injector. Uh, so what you want to do is key your ignition. Like I said, if you just put the fuel rail back on, you may have to re-key key it over and over again. And when you turn it off, your ignition off, before you can re-key it, you got to wait like 10 seconds. Otherwise, it won't prime the fuel pump. So I'm just going to do this this couple of times just to show you. You'll mark down your fuel pressure reading on a piece of paper. You'll then uh, set your pulse to whatever you want. I got this set to three. I'll go over this here in a second. And then you'll hit pulse. Hear the injector going. You'll then look at the gauge and mark down on the paper how much it dropped. You'll go do that for each injector. Now, if one is way off from all the others, that usually means you have a problem with that injector. Uh, and that's basically how that test is done. Now I'll rekey the ignition again. And uh, see if I can do this again. I do have this set. Here's the pressure. There's the injector. It's dropping a little by itself. So uh, I either got a leak somewhere or a bad diaphragm. But I'll get into that later. And then you'll pulse it. And uh, it's only a good way to check your uh, spray pattern, too. And then you'll mark down the pressure on the paper. Uh, thing you need to know about this is, like right now, I just, I just pulsed it. Now, if I want to go change this, change the mode, say number four, which is uh, continuous, it won't do anything. You have to disconnect the battery lead, reconnect it, and then reset your, your mode. So there you go. One, it would be short. Two, would be medium. Three, long. And four, continuous. I don't think there's any pressure left in there, but we'll go continuous and just see what happens. And uh, like I said, rekey your ignition. Now I ran that fuel pressure way low. I might have to do this several times. Turn the ignition off, wait about 10 seconds. Hit again. Wait 10 seconds. Yep. I should have waited longer. It didn't do anything that time. There we go. And there it is. Fully charged. It actually went up to like 43, so I'm not too worried about it. Then I like say, like I said, I want to change my mode. It won't do it. I got to go to the battery. Disconnect it. Come back over here. Set my mode. 
I'll set it to three and there we go now uh, before I put this fuel reel on I went and sprayed it full of uh, carb and choke cleaner I filled the entire fuel reel so I'm gonna go ahead and spray every one of these injectors just to clean them I'm not it that they were fine when I took them out in case you haven't even followed my other videos just uh check them out they'll be uh go to my other videos just click on my uh, name and uh, go to my uh, YouTube page and look at my videos and you'll see all the videos things I've been doing uh, another tip I have when you put your fuel reel back on you'll have o-rings here uh, put new ones if you have them and put some uh, oil on them I like to put oil on the threads on the o-ring and on the shaft of this pipe here this fuel uh, in case you haven't seen that video I'll leave a link up there on these fuel lines and when you put the injectors back in the manifold, make sure you put some oil on them. I like to use uh, Marvel Mystery Oil. The uh, reason I like to use that is it's I know it's compatible with the gas. That's something you can add to your gasoline. Uh, so something to keep in mind. Uh, I got other projects yet. I still got to finish putting on my... Uh, runners i did a in case you haven't seen it the last video i did was on the uh, gasket matching how you have to be careful about that and careful with what to do with the gaskets uh i resealed this intake i got to put the headers on the exhaust change the oil of course i got to get all the belts and the brackets and everything back on once i get everything on there uh not much more to go over. I'll go over to the distributor when putting that back in. Whenever I pick a distributor out, I always go to top dead center on number one. And let me see if I can get a light down there. I get a light down there, but hopefully you guys can see that. I always bring the timing mark to uh, zero degrees and... Make sure the distributor is at the number one position. That is the number one decision uh, position I have on my distributor cap. I put a little mark there with a marker. I don't know if you can see it. And down here, I don't doubt, I doubt you can see it down there, but I take a uh, go in there with a chisel, and I actually mark the distributor and the base of the manifold. Hopefully, you guys can see that. And. Uh, Make a note, if it, note where this comes out. Make sure it goes back in. Make sure you engage your oil pump. And every time I line those marks up and do it that way, I stick a timing light on it. I'm, I'm almost always either right on. The timing mark will be right on when I check it with a timing light. Of course, you always check your timing light with the wire disconnected, your uh, EST wire. And uh, I always do that. And, I, and every time I do that, the distributor is almost right on perfect. So that's uh, one way to do your distributor. Uh, I don't think I have any more else to go over in this video. I, uh, I'll have other videos when I get the exhaust on and when I start this up. It's going to smoke like hell when I started it up. I went and there's a lot of carbon buildup. I'll do another video on that on the pistons. So I went and sprayed, uh, for now, I just went and sprayed some Marvel Mystery Oil in there to hopefully break them up and blow out the exhaust without damaging the motor but i think in next year i'm going to refresh in this motor uh i want to make some change i want to get better heads and i want to get uh, a different cam and different pistons if i do it but if that's a big if so i'll go over i'll if i do like i said just check back on the channel or subscribe i want to thank everybody for watching god bless